Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You join me in Fort Collins at home where for pretty much the first time ever we have the bulk of the cars that I own together. Now this is pretty surreal seeing this. I've never actually lined them up uh, in one shot before and I'm almost a little bit speechless that this is uh, the garage at the moment and we are currently missing five cars, uh, two of which are to come that I haven't announced to you yet and three of which which I'll update you at the end. Um, I'm also gonna let you know I'm, I'm thinking about selling one or two of these as well. So, you know, just wanted to, in this video, give you like a full tour. Here's every car that I currently have. Here's what's going on with them. And honestly, it's a little bit of a reminder to myself as to the service needs for all of these, because of course, running a fleet like this, especially with friends borrowing cars and they're always out and being used, um, things break, things get bumped into, unfortunately. And I sort of have to make a list of what all the cars need. So that's kind of what we're gonna do in this video and go through each car individually, tell you about an ownership update and some of the servicing that I have to book them in for. And um, yeah, just crazy to see. <laughs> this is just insane. I want to apologize before we start in case a wind gust comes through. I've actually misplaced the um, wind socks to this microphone, so I've ordered some more. But uh, if you hear a little bit of wind noise, I apologize. It is a pretty still day today, though, so I think we'll be OK. Um, this is my 2012 Nissan Leaf, and I truly love it. I've, I've kind of never been a Leaf guy. Uh, you know, I've always called them college professor cars and whatever. but. What I really wanted to do with this, I wanted to buy the cheapest electric car for sale in the entire country. And that's what I did about, I don't know, five or six months ago. I went on Auto Tempest, not sponsored, and went, you know, least expensive to most expensive fuel type electric. And this popped up, $3,750, buy it now on eBay. And that's exactly what I did. Um, we've done some range testing on this, even though it has 60 or 70,000 miles on it now. Ah, I've got an Audi ripping off in the distance. <laughs> uh, even though it's got 60 or 70,000 miles on it now, it still gets 50 miles of highway range and it's just been uh, trouble free except for when the 12 volt battery died. Uh, we were doing some cold weather testing for the Auto Spec Reviews channel and the 12 volt died on this. And I have a video previously on this channel where we had to go and rescue the leaf and unbrick it. And that was actually pretty hard on the car because we had a low state of charge in the main battery pack. The 12 volt died and it was freezing, minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So it actually recovered and showed no signs of de degradation from that incident, which I'm happy about. Uh, there is one major problem with this car, which is the onboard charger for AC charging uh, is dead. And I bought it that way. I bought it knowing that it had a failed AC charger, which means I can only DC fast charge this car. And I've been saying for some time that I'm gonna replace the onboard charger and that's exactly what is still on the list to do for this car. Also, if you join me around this end over here, you'll notice um, I also purchased the car with a bit of accident damage. You know, these things happen when you get the least expensive electric car in the country. Um, you know, it had this, it was a total write-off, so it's technically a salvage car, but it's able to be registered and insured. I've actually lost the license plate for the back of it, misplaced it. So <laughs> the front plate's current, it's all registered. I just don't know where the back plate went with the sticker. It's just missed. What happened was it was backed into the garage and I put the front plate on and I couldn't get to the back plate and I left it somewhere and I don't know where I left it. I also have misplaced the license plate for my trailer, uh, which is back over at the house. And it's a, I don't know, 24, 26 foot, just flat car hauler. And that's what I tow behind the Rivian most of the time. So this is doing really well. I've been driving it quite a bit. We actually used it for some of the shuttling to get the cars over here today. And the Leaf is, um, it's just great. I can't believe that for 3,700 bucks, I got a car that works, that's reliable. The only thing I've really had to do is replace the 12 volt battery and the key batteries, and it's been rock solid. Got to get the onboard charger fixed, and then that's kind of it. I am thinking about doing some interesting modifications to it, maybe coming later this year. Um, and, and that's all depending on when we can get our hub, our building to house these cars finished, because that's been one hell of a, a situation. I'll update you at the end of the video as to what's going on with the hub. And then this is our beloved 2019 Tesla Model 3 Performance. I was actually selling this car. I had written everything out and it was ready to go about a year ago, I would say. What do you think, Alyssa? About a year ago, right? Yeah, exactly a year 
exactly a year ago and you guys freaked out our out of spec motoring audience our out of spec reviews audience said no you can't sell this car um, I had actually signed everything in the wrong ink color selling it to driveway.com they said they were giving me a lot of money for it forty four thousand dollars or forty two thousand dollars I can't remember a lot of money for this thing had almost a hundred thousand miles on it at that time and I was like I can't turn down that offer um, but after the paperwork mess up and then you guys really wanting me to keep it, I said, okay, you know what we'll do is we'll keep this and it's truly a great car, really, really enjoy it. And we'll do a high mileage experiment with the Model 3. So what we are doing with this is this is the car that goes on road trips. It's the car that we loan out when friends come into town. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the long distance car. It's let's see how batteries hold up under extreme use. It's had a lot of track days. It's had a lot of supercharging. More than half of the charging in its almost 130,000 miles has been DC fast charging. Actually, probably 75% of it's been DC fast charging because that's what this thing is just built to do cover distance at great speed we have the martian mw03 wheels on it with nokian hakapolita uh studded tires on this particular one these are the 10 ev tires for those of you who don't know nokian sponsors some of our out of spec stuff so i try and keep most of our cars on nokian tires when possible but there are certain applications where they don't make the correct tire for what i need for example on the model s plaid but we try and get there just holding up so well we've put on the mountain pass coilover suspension on this car it's with a lift kit as well so we have the comfort kw uh, mountain pass uh, oriented suspensions with a lift block we've disconnected the sway bars and this thing rides and drives like a dream you go into corners it leans over like a rally car it soaks up the bumps fully adjustable compression and rebound on the suspension and i've just been really enjoying it and and truly it's Every time I get into this car, I'm just like, it feels so right. It's me. It fits me perfectly. And I just love driving it. Uh, can't wait for the summertime when we can take the, the studded tires off and really get the suspension to work um, with some grippier tires. This is just proven to hold up perfectly. It's been through everything and, and no issues at all. Can't recommend a Model 3 enough if you're looking for a good used electric car or even just a high mileage example. And then we come over here to our other Tesla. This is my Tesla Model S Plaid. It's a 2022 car. I've had it actually almost a year now, which is crazy that we're rolling up. I feel like I just got it. I've only put 10,000 miles on it, which to some of you may sound like quite a bit considering I have all the other cars here, but I actually got the Rivian before this and that has 30,000 miles on it. So just kind of shows you how much I've been driving this or how little I've been driving it in comparison. And that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason was it was involved in an accident. Um, one of my friends stuffed it into a curb, unfortunately, and that took a few months to fix. That's all been documented on this channel and out of spec reviews, and it's been fixed for the most part. It never actually felt totally perfect after the accident, to be honest. And uh, I took it in for to service at uh, Tesla of Loveland just a few weeks ago and uh, gave them a list of all the creaks and rattles I was hearing in the car and they fixed pretty much all of them. So I have to give them props. In just a few hours, same day service, they fixed 90% of my issues with this car. I was really impressed. There's still a small little rattle coming from the back and uh, most notably the reason I, I haven't been driving it were, was the rattles of course, but um, the steering wheel, the yoke. I'm not against the yoke. The yoke actually is cool. We had it on track. I didn't really hate it on track. In fact, I thought it was kind of fun on track because it gave a, another element of challenge, if you will. And as long as you're not doing big skids, like you can still work the car pretty well with the yoke. That was not a big issue. However, I really love a round steering wheel in a car. Every time I drive a car, to me, the, the steering wheel is just a great touch point. I really like that I can put my hands at this sort of curved position, sort of in the Rolls Royce driving position down below. And in this, it's just a, a square on the bottom or right angles. And I never get a very comfortable hand position. So uh, in just a few days from today, perhaps uh, before or after this video airs, I'm not totally sure, Tesla is coming out to do a mobile service retrofit where I've paid for the round steering wheel on this car. So I'm very much looking forward to doing that. Uh, in terms of the upgrades on this car, we have Martian Wheels MW05 in uh, 20 by 10 inch square stance. We have 295 section Pilot Sport 4S tires on the car. Uh, what's funny is this thing is so heavy that 
the four S's really don't feel like that much tire when you start driving it fast because this weighs a ton. So uh, might want to get some Cup 2 or Cup 2 R's or maybe even try some of the, the Goodyear Eagle uh, F1 um, uh, or excuse me, the Supercar 3 tires. I'm really excited. They also make a Supercar 3 R, which is a pretty crazy tire. Might want to go a little bit more aggressive, wider wheel. I do have Mountain Pass uh, Performance Upper Control Arms. Uh, that I've ordered. Actually, they've arrived. I have a brake booster um, from them as well, a brake booster brace, so that when you hit the brake pedal that you don't have deflection in the firewall to just to kind of stiffen the pedal a little bit, give you more um, control over the brake pedal. I have Mountain Pass big brakes, front and rear steel with a uh, Carbotech pad and uh, stock uh, calipers. So basically the brakes are bigger discs, same caliper spaced out a little bit, and uh, that it actually they've been working great for me they've really been performing well and uh, I'm, I'm very impressed i like a steel setup for how i'm using this car which is pretty much for daily driving road trips and the occasional track day but when we're on track we are romping on this thing and the drivetrain's been amazing i do have uh, one issue with the drivetrain though i do have to say is for the first mile that i drive this car and i've heard other plaid owners talk about this i get a very weird vibration and it's always pulling out of the neighborhood till I get it up to speed and it feels like the fluid circulates flew through but it's almost like you have a flat spotted tire and uh, I don't like that so much also downside come join me around the back here the car does need a wash everything needs a wash they're all dirty I don't know how well the camera will pick this up but someone backed into the car in a parking lot in Phoenix on a recent road trip um, I sort of parked it across from a car and um, was looking across the way and they were pretty far away and their bumper was just ruined and it looked like they had tried to hit every possible thing imaginable. I mean, it was like a Nissan Versa or something like that, some basic economy white car. And, uh, you know, sure enough, come out in the morning, I thought we were gonna be safe and I should have taken a picture of their car. And uh, we were in a rush and I should have called the, the security uh, you know, the hotel to pull up the footage or whatever, but I just, just left. I did not have sentry mode on. Um, so yeah, it, uh, either way, I mean, I think it just needs prob it's through the paint, unfortunately, it's gonna need a little bit of a repaint in that section with some blending. It's not gonna be cheap, um, but that'll be an interesting thing to figure out how we go about that. It, it's sort of like, and a lot of you have commented as well, after the, the first accident with this car, it's got a little bit of bad juju, if you will. And um, I really hope that's not the case because I, I think it's one of the most impressive vehicles I've ever driven. It's so fast, it's so good at charging, it's so great on road trips. I hope the round steering wheel can fix a lot of it and we can really have a dialed in Model S Plaid. This is really, I got this to be a showcase to what electric performance can be. And now that we're coming into the warm season and we're dialing in the car, I hope to take it to track days more. It's been out at High Plains Raceway and do some whatever we can with it to showcase sort of peak electric performance is the goal for this car. And then we move to the uh, smart car, which <laughs> hard not to love our smart car. I bought this car new in 2018, I believe. And, um, you know, really as a city runabout, it was just as I was getting Ellie, my, my dog, and I thought, how cool would it be to have a golden retriever in the smart car with me, cruising around North Carolina with the convertible. And, it, and I just love electric smarts. It's my second electric smart car that I've owned. And, uh, you know, I gotta tell you, this thing is a tank. It has an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack or maybe 16 kilowatt hour battery pack. I can't see any signs of degradation. We keep the battery pack at about 50% of the of state of charge all the time. It's very rarely full charged and very rarely depleted. Just with the, with the other cars, all the EVs we keep around, you know, 30 to 50% for long-term storage. And um, we have Nokia and Haka Palita, uh, uh, five, are they fives? Haka Palita R5s, excuse me, uh, winter tires on this. It's probably one of the only smart cars in America with aggressive winter tires on it, but we've had it out. We've made videos with this car out uh, at Copper Mountain just recently where we had it on a snow course and it's so much fun. Rear motor, rear wheel drive, top down, big skids. Uh, and honestly, it's just the perfect city runabout. We used between the Leaf and this uh, to shuttle all of the cars over here today. And it's, it's small, it's nimble, it's premium, it feels great. There are a couple things that it needs though. The first is, um, you know, a lot of friends drive this car and I'm pretty sure Alyssa's sister, Michaela, uh, uses uh, hand lotion. 
a lot and she got the steering wheel really greasy <laughs> and uh you know just just with use and you know we're always in this car dirty or whatever the muddy dogs are in here so um i ordered a new steering wheel for it surprisingly less than 300 dollars for a brand new mercedes product steering wheel Alyssa's shaking her head no how much was it Oh, 350. Excuse me. Okay. So $350. Still pretty inexpensive considering like an S class steering wheel is like three grand. Um, so, you know, 350 bucks new steering wheel. That's going to make the car feel so much fresher, in my opinion. Um, also, the whole car needs a deep clean. I mean, it is just sort of disgusting in here. We have the, the dog leash stuff. I mean, there's dirt everywhere. It's just, you know, really needs to go to Colton and just get a nice just a wipe down on everything. It would take us two seconds to do it, so we could do that as well. Um, another point is the windshield is still screaming at us because we've not put a new piece of glass on this. And actually, the glass is fine. Uh, it's the seal that holds the glass to the body is completely gone. And this car's out of warranty. Actually, they voided the warranty on me on this car on year one because I have an ESP disconnect switch to do big skids because there's no way to turn off traction control. And Mercedes, uh, yeah, you can show everyone the switch down there, Alyssa. Thank you very much. Mercedes uh, said, uh, you know what, you, you can't do that. And because it technically interrupts the speedometer, um, they were like, we don't know the actual mileage on the car. So it could be over 50,000, which was the, the warranty. So we're just voiding the whole thing. But actually this was right after I sort of bought it that they noticed that because it was like the first thing that I did. And I'm like, for the range of the car and the recharging time, it was mathematically not possible for this to reach 50,000 miles and they wouldn't believe it. I'm like, even if I put this thing on a dyno all day, 24 hours a day, went wide open throttle, 87 miles an hour, top speed and charged it. No, they wouldn't have it. They voided the warranty and um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I also had a prepaid service uh, situation because it was very cheap, but it needed service every three years. They voided that as well. Um, but that's that's part of the fun, I guess, when owning cars. I was a little bit upset about that at the time, but now it's all passed. And really the only thing I have to do is replace the battery uh, filter. There's like a little cartridge to soak up any moisture in the battery pack. I just purchased one when I was getting the Sprinter serviced recently, and it'll take me two seconds. Perhaps I'll make a little video doing that in the driveway, but uh, I have the new filter that I'll put in the battery pack. Other than that, other than a deep clean, a windshield seal, new steering wheel, new filter, things ready to go. Love it. I mean, truly one of the best. And then we come to what's really been my daily driver since I bought it. This is what I spend, you know, most of my time in. If I ever have to go anywhere, run errands or, or we're filming, this is what I'm driving. It's my Rivian R1T. And it is truly and objectively, in my opinion, the best vehicle I've ever owned. I have a massive battery pack, 127 kilowatt hour usable now that they've opened it up a little bit. Um, I think the design is great. I think the build quality is unbelievable. The suspension ride quality is what I really love. It rides like a Range Rover. It's so comfortable, so smooth. I can then take it up into the mountains if I have to do a shoot, lock it in sport mode, and it handles for what it is unbelievably well. Um, you know, the, the, what's crazy is <laughs> it's just, it does everything. It's the one vehicle that kind of combines all of these into one. It's, and it's pretty impressive. Um, and it's actually one of the most fun cars I have to drive because I don't own any sports cars at the moment, which I feel is a little bit against my character because I've always had manual transmission, fun cars to drive, but I currently don't own one. Um, and so that's kind of been on the back of my mind a little bit, but, uh, just loving this car. The uh, towing ability of this is incredible. I've towed across the country with it now from all the way on the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific a couple times. It's uh, been DC fast charged a ton. We've used it hard. It's been on track and you know what? It hasn't really given me many issues at all. Um, I do want to go through the service history perhaps in another video on my one year ownership update which we're coming very close to and uh, there's been a lot of little things that it's needed. My power charge port needed some adjustment when I got it. I had a couple little just one little speaker rattle. It's been in I would say three or four times for service one including a recall that they all did. They actually just swung by my house the other day. I wasn't even here and said, we need to check a seatbelt sensor. So that was pretty cool um, that they just, you know, walked up to the truck, checked it, and, and that was done. Uh, it must be the only power tonneau cover Rivian that's still in existence that's working. Uh, and that's been a notorious failure point. If you come back here, I'll show you. This tonneau cover um, ha has really given owners a lot of trouble, so much so that they removed it from new production. And I hear they don't even have a manual one in its place yet. 
but I use this all the time. And I even help it a little bit. I push it forward and pull it back when it comes out. But I think because I use it all the time and I keep it relatively clean that it uh, works pretty well. The most recent service was probably the most major issue I had with the vehicle, which was the onboard air compressor, the accessory air compressor died. Uh, they replaced that and now I'm able to fill up tires air directly from my truck bed, which I love that feature. And I was pretty sad when that died. The second major issue I had with the Rivian was actually one I don't think was much of an issue. Um, I posted a picture on Twitter one morning with the truck kind of kneeling down. It's after it had sat for a week and it lost some air pressure. Rivian claimed there was a small leak somewhere in the air suspension system. I don't think they ever truly found out where it was, um, but they replaced the whole front left air strut and my air compressor and I believe some lines in between as well. So they really went through and I now have a new suspension air compressor and a new front left damper air compressor. And, um, you know, no complaints about that. I'd love to get new stuff, but I, I'm not sure if that was really truly an issue or not. But uh, they called me and said, hey, we saw your, your post, bring it in and we'll get it fixed. And they certainly did. But just in terms of the sound system, the ride quality, the, the design, the way that it's small enough where I can fit it in town, this is what I drive, uh, you know, almost exclusively during the week. It is, I can't say enough good things about it. It truly is incredible and uh, I've of course made a lot of content with this vehicle so you can find all that on all the channels. Now we come to uh, sort of uh, the, the e-tron which is an interesting car because this was one of the first new acquisitions I would say over a year and a half ago right Alyssa? We've had it for some time this is Alyssa's personal daily driver and um, it's really been one hell of a solid vehicle. We've only had one major issue, well, I should say two issues with it. The first is there's a little bit of a leak when you take it through a, a high pressure car wash. We do touchless washes on all the cars. Thankfully, we have a very high quality um, touchless car wash here in the front range of Colorado called, um, it's escaping me, Auto Wash. Thank you, Auto Wash. And Auto Wash is, um, Great, they use high quality chemicals. It's Colton approved, so we're all good to go there. And um, you know, this car, the, the only major issue we had was when it got really cold, you know, minus 25, minus 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it actually fell down. The air suspension gave out in the rear and it was riding on the bump stops. And what's interesting, it wasn't just this e-tron. We were at the Audi dealer trying to film a video and other e-trons had done the same. And the only thing we could think of was when it tried to dump the air suspension, there must've been just enough moisture in the suspension lines for the valve block to get jammed and it just purged all the air out. As soon as we put it in a garage, it came back up and it was totally fine. We took it to Audi to have them service it. They, they verified the problem. They, they knew what was going on, um, but they didn't really know if, how to fix it more or less. So they put a software update on the car on a campaign. They said, you know, keep an eye on it. Um, if it happens again, we'll, we'll dig into it some more. This car was a, it's a 2019 e-tron. It was certified pre-owned when we bought it. So we have an unlimited mileage warranty um, for I think another two years remaining, which is pretty good. So we're not too worried about that at, at this moment. And perhaps this will get upgraded to the Q8 e-tron when that comes out. I'm not totally sure. Alyssa loves it. The only problem is the range in the winter time is rough. Summertime range, 180, 200 miles all day long, no problem. Winter time, you're looking at 90 to 110 miles of range. It's, it really is affected by cold weather. We have studded Nokian Hakaplita 10 EV tires on it. It is a tank in the snow. This thing is unstoppable. You put it in all road mode, turn off the stability control fully, and it turns into a snowmobile, raises the suspension a bit. Just amazing. We've done some upgrades to it as well. We've completely blacked out the car. Um, there's a couple little things we're waiting on. We have Martian MW05 wheels coming for it, I think in 22 inch wheel form, which is going to be really spicy. <laughs> it's going to look awesome. I think we might paint the calipers orange just to give it that first edition look to match the rest of the e-tron logos, but we bought the black grill for it. Alyssa really wanted a murdered out e-tron, and so that's exactly what she got here. You can see the window trim around the outside. Uh, Colton actually wrapped all of this and the roof rails and these crossbars black. I mean, these, these were all silver, and it looks so sinister. It looks awesome and you could you could not tell at all that this is a wrap he did an amazing job wrapping this and he's not a professional rapper um, he really did one one great job you can see on the back we got the black audi rings back here it's a little dirty at the moment we got the black and orange e-tron badge and he really went all out the only component left to black out is this 
piece down here, which I believe we can purchase. It was just really expensive. We actually, kind of, I kind of forgot about this up until today, but um, Colton said that was a little bit too hard for him to wrap that piece in the back. So we might just find a, do a junkyard find or something, find a, a black out, uh, blacked out version of that. But this car is gonna look great. This is the winter wheel and tire setup. The summer wheel and tire setup will be the MW05s and uh, on 22 inch wheels and tires, it's gonna be amazing. And uh, we, we love this car. It's got 27,000 miles on it now, 26,000 miles. And uh, Alyssa, if you stand a little bit closer, maybe you can tell the viewers how you feel about it. I absolutely love this car, but I've been running into a lot of issues when it comes to the winter that uh, the range is just not enough. And when just paying for such an expensive car, you want, any, you want it all. You want to be able to go anywhere and everywhere. So that's been my only gripe, but I mean, I absolutely adore the car. It's, it's my, my baby. And the one thing I think we've noticed with this as well is we, because we test cars, we're lucky to be in and out of everything all the time. There's almost nothing else on the market that kind of comes close to this in terms of seating position, bank vault type feeling, ride quality. We've driven BMW iX for both Alyssa and I. It's, it, we both agree it's a far superior vehicle iX to this. It's generations ahead. But there is something about driving the e-tron and having all the Audi stuff in there that really works for us. It just, it's got great massaging seats, the best sound system out of this bunch. The Bang & Olufsen in this absolutely will blow the windows out of the car next to you. I it's, think it has the best interior out of all these cars. Alyssa claims the best interior out of all these cars. I agree. I, I, I mean, Everything every time. The seats, the, the comfort, the how you sit, the steering wheel, like all that stuff. I mean, yeah, I think it beats every car. Well, um, good, good thing it's yours then, <laughs> that you're able to drive it and use it. And, um, you know, for me, totally agree. I, I just love this so much. It's, it's a great car. And then we get to uh, the one that has my heart, unfortunately, which will, you know, financially ruin someone. This is Judy. And Judy is my Range Rover Classic. It was the first vehicle I purchased that I never intend to get rid of. Um, you know, most of these cars are cars that I want to cycle in and out and, and use for coverage, although I've kind of fallen in love with all of them. That becomes a little bit too expensive. Um, this is one that, that I really want to keep. And this is uh, my 1991 Range Rover Classic. And, uh, you know, it needed some love. I bought it for $20,000 from a guy named Hugh, who's become a, a little bit of a friend over, over time. He's great car enthusiast. Of course, you have to be to keep one of these alive. And, um, you know, he was, took the best photos. He was super transparent about where it was. And since I knew that this was something I really wanted to keep forever, I'm a Range Rover enthusiast. I love the Range Rover Classic. I took it to a shop in uh, Colorado Springs and had pretty much a full mechanical restoration done on it. It had a, the engine came completely out, rebuilt, reseal. We have a new transfer case. The transmission had a service, um, new axles, new, um, new bearings throughout, new bushings throughout, basically anything mechanical that we could replace, we did. And it went for two rounds of service and uh, famously exploded five miles after the first round. <laughs> so I picked it up with a, with a bill, put it, you know, drove it back up, or I should say put it on a trailer, trailered it back up actually. As soon as we took it off and drove it, it uh, yeah, exploded, the heater core popped on it. Just unrelated, you know, you sort of start pushing the problems down the line. And I've been driving it now for six months and usually when I take it out of the garage I drive it every day for a week or so and then it goes back away um, but it, it does get some use it gets some mileage I've driven it down to Denver and back you know 150 200 mile days and it's been wonderful I've been sort of evaluating it of course with any Range Rover if you think it's perfect you're missing something there, there is always a list with every Range Rover it doesn't matter the generation but this um, has been great now the color is different from probably the last time you saw it. I don't know if we did any videos on this, but this is khaki green by Vivid Vinyl Wraps. And we just kind of experimented with it. Col I asked Colton to just wrap the car briefly. He didn't do, um, like he didn't spend that much time uh, really trying to make it 100% perfect, nor did I ask him to. I just wanted to see what the color kind of looked like on the vehicle and maybe run it like this for a couple of years because the paint underneath was peeling and fading. And, you know, I, I know it's going to need a repaint at some point down the line, but the color was one that I, I wanted to really experiment with and see if this was the color we should go with when it comes time for a repaint. And I think it is. I love this shade of green. There's a, a, a Range Rover classic restoration shop called Stray Dog Classics, and they do some of the best classic Range Rover restorations, I believe based out of New York. 
and um, they had one in this color that I just fell in love with and said, all right, well, let's try and recreate that a little bit with Judy. And um, so I think eventually, probably not anytime soon, once the wrap really starts falling apart, which it kind of already is in certain areas, you know, just temperature changes, it's shrunk. We have bubbles here. I mean, this was just a very quick job by Colton, but uh, at some point soon, we're going to get it painted and, and really gone through. I got to get all the little dents out of it before we do that. And that'll be a big project. I've never painted a car before, but this is the one that deserves it. She's a trooper. There's not a hint of rust on this vehicle anywhere. It has 200,000 miles on it, 190,000 roughly. And it's, it's working great. Excuse some of the wind noise. I know the mic's going to be picking that up through here. So if I stand this way, the wind should be a little bit better. We'll wait for this gust to go through. This is the most recent acquisition uh, that you guys have seen on this channel, if you've been watching, which I think is maybe a little bit of a waste of time, but you know, I, I love uh, Range Rovers, you guys know, from Judy. I thought this is my favorite generation Range Rover. I've owned them before, L322s, and the right now I think um, is the time to buy. And you know, I wasn't really super in the market, but I always keep notifications on for cars that I'm interested in in case a super deal pops up and I just, you know, gotta pounce on it. And this was one of those. Um, in the back of my head, I've been thinking, you know, an L322, particularly this generation, there's three versions of the L322, a Mark I, II, and three. The Mark II, the middle one, this one ran from 07 to 09, and it is um, I, the most reliable generation, and this one's a non-supercharged one and just runs really great, and so that's uh, why I went for it. It only had 55,000 miles when I bought it, and I bought it for $12,500. There was a dealer fee, there was taxes, whatever, 15 grand is what I paid for this. Um, I was on Bring a Trailer recently, which you know you really get the cream of the crop, but this one is in great condition for the price. And they've been selling for 22 to 27, somewhere around there, 25 average, I would say, for something of this quality and this mileage and, and stuff. So that's why I went for this particular one. I thought I got a good deal. I can still service it, use it. And if I decide for whatever reason, hey, it's time to sell it, I still think I can make a little bit of money on this uh, when it comes time to go. I'm not sure if this one will stick around forever. I will have an L322 around, but I'm not sure this is the, the ultimate keeper, but I do love it. Um, I flew into Florida, drove it straight to Austin, Texas. There's a whole vlog on this. And, you know, it's just kind of a little bit risky buying a used Range Rover from Florida and taking it on a big road trip. But um, roughly 3,000 miles, I think 2,500 miles or so um, from, from uh, Miami or where was I? Palm Beach to Austin to Colorado. It did not skip a beat. In fact, it fixed itself along the way. I had some air suspension issues. Um, it wasn't purging the air suspension. And so the uh, the little purge valve where it can let air out. They have a little silencer on there. And I did a little bit of Googling in some forums. I just removed the silencer, which got clogged of, I don't know, junk or whatever. And now the air suspension works perfectly until last night where it fell down. <laughs> I've never, I, I've left this parked for a little while and uh, now twice I've come back to it in the front uh, shocks are just fully deflated. So I'm not sure if it has to do with the silencer being out, but either way, um, you know, it's a Range Rover. Like I said, if it's perfect, then you're missing something. It'll just be kind of fun to, to get this in. I got to bring it in, get it serviced, all new fluids. It's got a couple little things I want to have fixed, but overall for $12,500, I don't think I could have gotten a better deal on really anything. This thing rocks and, uh, you know, just a 2009 Range Rover HSE. It's fantastic. And now we come to the old man. This is uh, something that has a little bit of sentimental heritage or sentimental value to me, if you will. My grandmother growing up had a Lexus LS 400 of this generation. It's the sort of refresh version. Um, this one needs a little bit of love, headlight cleaning, paint uh, stuff. Uh, it's actually going to be sitting in a storage unit until we can get around to it. I'll take it out and drive it probably once every two weeks or so for a couple days. But this is affectionately named the old man. I bought it from a friend of mine here on YouTube known as The Driven Dave or just Driven Dave. Um, so check out The Driven Dave YouTube channel. He is one of the coolest guys out there. I love him. And uh, we're going to be making some videos together here pretty soon, hopefully. But, uh, you know, 19, I can't even remember what year this is, 1997, 1998, somewhere around there. Lexus LS400. It's got the, the V8 up there, the UZ that just lasts forever. Um, it's so smooth. We've, I've driven this a ton. I've had it for a track day on High Plains Raceway, actually. That's been a, a vlog on this channel. It's just 
unbelievably reliable, works great, and um, you know, you cannot beat this car. I, I called it the best engineered vehicle of all time. I still stand by that. Toyota and Lexus, when they launched this product, went all out, and uh, it shows. It still drives like a better than most modern cars today, and it's got you know 250,000 miles almost on it, and it's just amazing. You can see most of the cars in, in the garage are not perfect pieces. I, I want cars to drive and experience, and I don't have all the money in the world to get the nicest example of every one, um, but I am lucky enough to just sort of pick and choose different categories and, and get in at, at a pretty reasonable level. Not the worst ones, not the best ones, but just ones that are drivers, and um, that, that's how every car should, intended, should be intended to be used. And then we have this, which is actually the most expensive vehicle that I own. And um, that one's been tough because this is very expensive to, to you know, to hold on to. And I, I should have sold it during COVID, to be honest. Uh, during COVID, these values were were up close to $200,000, which is actually more than what I paid for it. I think I paid one fifty dollars for this. And I could have made a bunch of money on it and still have enjoyed my use with it. And now, of course, the interest rates are crazy. No one's traveling anymore. Now it's tanked in value. I still, uh, you know, still toying with the idea of selling it to make room for the sports car that I really want in the garage. And that's kind of the, the inner pull in me right now is do I want to go overlanding, off-roading, adventuring, or do I want to go to track days, canyon carving with a manual transmission, something, probably a GT3. And um, I think it wouldn't be prudent to run both of those considering I already have this. I was toying with the idea of selling the Plaid and selling maybe one or two other cars to make room for the sports car, but there's just so much content that I have to make with the Plaid that I need to hold on to that for a little while longer to finish telling that story. Get the round wheel, get the suspension parts on there and have some more fun with it. So this is really the only thing that um, I know for sure isn't gonna stick around forever, but I've really loved my time with it. This is a Winnebago Revel. It's a 2020 Sprinter 4x4 chassis, 2500 factory lift kit. Um, it has the three liter, six cylinder, I believe OM, I forget exactly the engine code. I used to know this by heart, but it's got the OM diesel in here that Mercedes has used forever. Unbelievably reliable uh, powertrain, you would think actually, but it's not. And <laughs> it's just been uh, really fun. We've taken this on mid major adventures all the way down from South Florida to the tip of Prudhoe Bay to California to the Northeast. It's been everywhere in my two years almost of owning it. I don't think it's quite two years, maybe a year and yeah, probably two years now. We picked it up at the factory, brand new with 50 miles on it from Winnebago in Forest City, Iowa. And um, we've really just loved every second with it. It's been amazing. The, the Alaska trip was one to die for. We It was really cool. And um, you know, it needs a full detail like everything. Everything's dirty. So spring cleaning, all the cars are gonna get detailed, all cleaned. Now that we have garage space, I rented a whole bunch of storage units to put everything so they're not all just sitting on the street in front of my house while we figure out what to do with the out of spec hub. And um, you know, this, this will be in, in storage, which is great. The lithium battery systems held up really well. It hasn't lost much capacity over the couple of years and I haven't been kind to the batteries. I've left them full charge for a little bit. I've left them at 10% for a little bit and it's really just um, held up very well. Lots of road trips, lots of good memories. We've used it hard, we've towed with it a lot, uh, and it's got over 30,000 miles on it now. So we have really used this thing. Again, considering it's never used for daily driving, it only comes out for trips. Uh, 30,000 miles is, is a lot of fun adventures. A lot of beautiful sights have been seen through that windshield. And uh, I kind of don't want to get rid of it because there's so many more places I want to go. I want to take this to Iceland and ship it over to the Scandinavian countries and, and you know, really use this as our mobile home for a, a big trip coming up. However, I also really want a GT3. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, as you can already tell, it's gotten a little bit out of hand in the car department where I need to really start thinking about, okay, how do we, how do we financially do this smart considering the fact that you know, I, I also want to get into, um, you know, uh, home ownership at some point soon and uh, building a ranch more or less. So there's a lot of stuff to do. Alyssa's raising her eyebrows, but we've talked about the ranch for, I don't know, five years now. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. We got to get land and build the out of spec ranch. It's no time to be driving expensive things around. Um, you know, the other cars I can justify for YouTube, the Rivian and the Plaid. Um, yeah, we are going to buy the ranch and then live. Right. 
Right, the plan originally was to, to live in this on the ranch. So I don't know, it's a little bit small for that. Maybe uh, I'd love a new old coach, but they're $3 million. So anyway, that's the Sprinter. I've made some videos about getting it serviced recently. It's been a pain in the butt to, to service. And that's one of the reasons I actually don't love using it that much. It threw a check engine light recently. I cleared the code, it hasn't popped back up. I don't know, it's still under warranty, which is wonderful from the, from the drivetrain perspective, but this is the one that I, that's a lot of, it's a big thing to have in the garage for something I don't use that much. So you might see a video where I, where I sell it soon. I might wait until the market clears up a little bit because you, there's just new ones clogging up the RV dealers, which just one year ago, you had to wait a year to get one. Just crazy. So those are all the cars that we have here. Let's talk about what is not here at the moment. We have the Crown Victoria police car, which is at the track in North Carolina. I think they're still using it. Sam's having fun with it down there and using it for some government work. And that's sort of just gonna live there. But we, but you know, I bought that for $1,600, uh, 2008 was it? Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor from somewhere out in the mountains of North Carolina police place. And it's been just, great we did not service it never even checked the oil and just ripped it on track for years and it's been been really good so that's that's one of my favorites the um what else do we have twizzy how could i forget about the twizzy oh man uh my Renault twizzy which is not here at the moment it's permanently stored at colton's detailing shop it's sort of like a fixture of art if you will the Twizy is doing really well. I made a video where we tuned the Twizy. I just bought a new motor controller to basically upgrade it to the faster uh, Twizy 80, I believe. Uh, yeah, 80, and I have the 40. So either way, I don't know, I got the spicy motor. I talked to the Twizy tuning guy in Norway and he's like, Kyle, you're gonna want this thing. It's gonna make the Twizy rip. And I'm like, hell yes, I want that thing that's gonna make the Twizy rip. So that's gonna be coming soon in the mail. We'll make some videos with that. Absolutely love my Twizy. And uh, it's through a service light recently, and I'm not sure why. I'm also thinking about upgrading the battery pack on the Twizy at some point to, uh, you know, I think a 12 kilowatt hour pack from the same guy in Norway. And uh, he's, he's really great, knows the cars inside and out. So, you know, more Twizy videos to come. That's been a dream car of mine to own, my true dream car. And I'm so lucky that I'm able to own it. I also own a Chevy Suburban, uh, which I'll insert a clip here at the end, uh, giving you an update on the Suburban at what was supposed to be the old hub, and I'll, I'll leave you with that last thought. But there's two vehicles that are still to come uh, that we haven't talked about yet or announced. So they're nothing fancy. They're, I mean, they're really cool. Uh, I think their combined value is $7,000 or $6,000 combined value. So they're not um, expensive uh, purchases, but they are ones that I think all the electric car enthusiasts are really gonna freak out about. They're, basically one of them I never even heard of until about a week ago, and I'm just so pumped up about it. The other one is something that I had watched on Top Gear years ago. I actually announced the car on the Smoking Tire podcast just recently. I was uh, a guest on there and I mentioned it. So if you're curious what it is, you can listen there. But um, yeah, I say, let's, let's pop over. I'll give you the update on the Suburban, tell you about how it was stolen and then was so trashy that they returned it. <laughs> and then we'll finish off this video. And here we have yet another vehicle. This is my 2005 Chevrolet Suburban 2500 with quadra steer super rare rear wheel steering you can see it's not in the best of shape and there's actually quite a bit of a story to kind of explain why it's not in the best of shape you see this vehicle was stolen out of our work parking lot on the other side of town and uh then returned I mean, it was so bad, they literally returned it. I bought this vehicle about a year ago for an out-of-spec overlanding project. I thought, let's go and build a Quadrasteer Suburban and you know, get it ready to go. And then it just turned out to be a little bit too much of a project. It's super rusty underneath. And um, just like kept finding more and more things that were wrong with it. Uh, and you know, it was kind of at the point where we're like, you know what, for the amount of money we'd need to put into this to get it perfect, I'll show you the front. It definitely would have um, been cheaper just to buy a nicer example. They are rare, they are hard to find. It was the first quadra steer I could find in Colorado. I love the lights on the roof. I love the eight lug wheels. I really want to get, I think they're the LZ zero wheels, if I remember correctly. They're the, you know, sort of uprated wheel from this. Actually, the wheel that this vehicle was probably delivered on and, um, you know, 5.3, it wasn't the, wasn't the big block or anything you could get in this, but, you know, just one of those vehicles I've always wanted to own and have a 2500 Suburban. And so 
at this point I found the rear arches with the lights in it. It was really decontented over its life. It has like 250,000 miles. Not really sure what I'm gonna do with it. Um, may end up using it as a parts vehicle for another 2,500 quadrasteer um, situation because the quadrasteer components all work, which is cool. It's actually just a little motor um, uh, control board that got wet, but everything else is working in here. So the interior is really not in good shape, especially after it was stolen. They smoked in it, did a whole bunch of stuff to it. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of completely trashed. So not sure what's going to happen with the Quadrasteer Suburban, but um, they also stole out, you know, a fresh set of Nokian tires that we were going to put on this thing when we were building it out. And yeah, whoever whoever stole it really romped on it. We can't find the keys to it, so it doesn't start. We because uh, they stole the keys as well. What happened was my colleague Zach um, parked it, backed it into a parking spot at the old spot at the old office and left the keys in the gas cap for me. I kind of forgot about it. I was supposed to take the keys out that night. And then three days later, I come back through and I noticed that it was nosed in kind of like this. And I'm like, well, why is it nosed in after I thought he sent me a picture of it backed in. And in fact, he was like, no, man, I definitely backed that thing in there and drove it in, backed it in and drove fine. And, uh, yep, found out that the interior was trashed. All of our stuff was stolen out of the inside. They left the quadrasteer fenders, the, the rarest thing in there. So I still have those in my garage and just can't believe that that happened here, uh, to the old burb. Um, I love this thing and maybe we'll just keep it around for nostalgic purposes. I don't know. I need to get new tires on it. I need to get new keys for it. It's, it needs an entirely new drivetrain, to be honest. And, and I'm not sure it's worth putting that into something that's so rusty. The frame's actually not bad, but everything else is pretty bad. So anyway, that's the funny story of the Quadrasteer Subur Suburban. It was stolen. It was so bad. They returned it. We called the police, let them know like, hey, if anyone did any crimes with the vehicle while well, they had it, it wasn't us. And they were like, yeah, we don't really care. And uh, yep, that was the end of it. <laughs> so now it's sitting here at where the new hub was supposed to be, which we had a lease on, um, but now we can't actually put a garage door there. So update coming on our plan B, which is where I think we'll move this over to the plan B hub. Well, hope you enjoyed that little story about the Suburban. Um, the hub situation, just to let you know, we went all in on option one, if you guys remember the videos back then, and uh, we signed everything, we were ready to go, and we had a contingency in there, which was we had the option to back out of the deal if the HOA would not allow us to put in our garage door. And the garage door needed to fit the Sprinter inside. And I thought it was gonna be the perfect place to house all of these cars inside in a little area with a bar that we could all hang out in, have viewers over. And unfortunately, the HOA denied the garage door request. I can't figure out why. We went back and forth with them many times. There were no, there was a little engineering challenge that we worked around. Um, you know, it, it was gonna look beautiful. And I think their main concern was it was gonna remove two parking spaces that we would have access to anyway. So a little bit of bureaucratic stuff. We backed out of the whole deal because of it. I was really bummed, still am. I think that would have been the perfect place. It's right down the street here from the house. And um, so that's a bit of a shame. So now we're back to square one. And square one leaves us with two different directions that we can possibly go. The first is we buy a piece of land to start the out of spec ranch and build just a metal building to house all the cars. And that would probably be the smartest and most prudent decision uh, to do. So that's kind of what I'm exploring right now. Option two is actually to lease a property uh, here just a, right down the street. Uh, that we can, again, convert into the hub. It, it's a little bit bigger than what we need. It's quite expensive, uh, but it would be sort of a, a, a purchase opportunity at the end. We would be able to house public DC fast charging for people coming through. And so that's something I'm considering, but I'm increasingly leaning against uh, compared to the option of just building our own, you know, basic metal building out in the middle of a field somewhere to house all of the cars. So right now what I've done, because I really don't like everything sitting outside and really only Judy has been in the garage, everything else has been outside for a while uh, or in Colton's detail shop. What I've done is I've rented a uh, storage uh, unit, multiple storage garages, and that's where all the cars will be kept. And that's why we're shooting this video now, because we're about to shuttle them over and put them away into storage. So, um, you know, we're really lucky to be, I, I honestly, I'm still shocked that these are the cars, you know, I think about them in my head occasionally, but never have seen them in a line. And to think that this isn't even all of them is just seems a bit excessive almost. And, um, 
I don't know, maybe we should sell more than just the Sprinter. This is a little bit crazy and a little bit out of hand. And, um, you know, thankfully, you know, these aren't supercars. They're, I mean, the, the Sprinter is supercar money, but everything else here is, is are pretty normal daily drivers consisting of low dollar amounts. It looks impressive, but if you were to add all of these up, you know, if you look at most other YouTubers out there with way bigger channels than us, granted, they, uh, you know, they got a lot more money tied up into cars than I do. Um, you know, for example, this was 20 grand, this was 12 grand, this was five grand. You know, it's not, and the Leaf was three grand. It's not like they're all $100,000 cars, but certainly, it's not inexpensive. The Plaid, the Rivian, the e-tron are heavy vehicles uh, to carry. So we're really lucky that we're able to do that. All because you guys watch our videos because of our great sponsors to Out of Spec, uh, to Magna, to Nokia, and to others that really support us on the back end. Um, you know, we're, I'm hugely grateful. And uh, what's great is I think if for whatever reason YouTube completely blows up, um, thankfully I got some cars that I can sell to live off of, <laughs> which is a great backup plan. So, uh, you'll see a lot, you know, hopefully that's not the case because we're working really hard. We're growing everything, but you just never know. So I think at a financial risk area, this is, this is pretty comfortable for me, even though it looks crazy. Um, anyway, can't thank you enough for your viewership. That was sort of an update on, uh, all of the cars that I own and what servicing they require and what they really need. I also just wanted to walk you through just at the end really quick um, to let you know immediate needs and then we'll close out the video. So the Sprinter doesn't really have any immediate needs for us. It just needs a detail. That's really the main thing that this thing needs and we're gonna get it out now that the weather's nicer and take it up in the mountains, go camping, go adventuring and, and have some fun. The Lexus already has had major service done before I purchased it. It really just needs an oil change every year and that's it. It's had a transmission service, it's had its timing uh, belt change. That's the big one for these and that's ready to rock and roll. The Range Rover's gotta go in, get all new fluids, and um, you know a couple little trim pieces here and there. And other than that, this thing is rock solid. So just some little stuff. I need to order new keys for it, the key's falling apart. Judy, surprisingly, doesn't need anything right now. I'm not gonna say anything. She'll break you know, in two seconds if I say that. But there are problems with her, but you know, like any Range Rover, she's okay. She's still a driver, and, it, and she's been great to, to enjoy. The e-tron, um, really the only thing we, we really got to do is, is get that black piece in the back uh, on there. Of course, now that we're getting into springtime, all the cars need a tire change out of winters into, into all seasons or summers. The Rivian um, needs to go in for the axles are clicking now again, second time. I got to get that fixed at some point. And uh, unfortunately they can't do that one mobile. I bring it to Denver. They got to put it on a lift and grease all the axles. So that's going to happen there. The smart car really needs a uh, new windshield uh, seal. It needs, um, I really want to get some cool OZ rally wheels for this thing and slam it, but I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, the original plan was to, yeah, the original plan was to lift it. The, now I kind of wanted to do like a, uh, you know, put it, put it on some OZ rally wheels, some Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s and have like an autocross, <laughs> autocross smart car, I don't know. The Plaid's getting its round steering wheel. It needs to get paint, unfortunately, on the rear bumper for that little incident. I need to get the suspension parts installed, and then this thing's just gonna be a ripper. It already is a ripper. And I think, actually, I wanna order the black Tesla badge for it, front and back, because it, I like a murdered out Tesla. I got the tints on there, it looks great, really good. This thing um, really just needs to be driven more. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the, I think Alyssa had one concern that she brought up and reminded us that the heater isn't as strong as we'd like it to be. And I'm not sure if it's that the PTC heater is actually failing or if it's that it's just not giving us the power that we're looking for because of a temperature sensor issue inside the cabin. Because when we go high heat, it blazes, this thing gets hot. But anything less than just putting the heater on max, it gets cold just driving around in the winter time. So I'm thinking the temperature sensor is bad um, and we need to test the air conditioning uh, controls as well because this is what we bring the dogs around a lot in, and especially Ellie, she cannot handle the heat at all. And so we, I don't feel comfortable using dog mode and relying on that temperature readout until we test the temperature. The Leaf needs an AC onboard charger stat, and other than that, it's rocking fine. I mean, we, there's little things that we can do to it, but that's what this thing needs. So pretty much every car needs a little something. I'm gonna take the time that I have here in Colorado to start scheduling servicing and get them all in line. 
And um, that's, that's really to wrap up the video. The Twizy's getting the new motor controller, the Suburban, I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but um, there you go. This is probably the once a year garage update, maybe, maybe every six months, something like that, of all the cars that I have. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, without you guys watching, this is truly not possible. And a huge shout out to our sponsors also for making this possible. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.